Excellent. Hi everyone, welcome to the very first monthly knitting wrap up on the Sweater and Spice channel. So happy to have you here. So glad you can join us today. Um, I would like to do this monthly and just talk about everything I've been knitting in a month. I'm not a very fast knitter, so that's why I do want to keep these to a monthly cadence. Some of you knitters out there are so fast and I don't know how you do it, but yeah, let's let's start here and see where we go. My name is Erin. I am from Los Angeles, California, and I started knitting in August 2022, just a couple months ago. Um, I did learn how to knit a long time ago in middle school, but I picked it up recently as a hobby again, and I'm having such a blast so far. Let's just start talking. Uh, I don't want to take up too, too much of your time, although I do love long, long form content, like hour to hour long videos. I love that, but I don't want to take up too much of your time, at least not for this first monthly wrap up. Um, I'm going to keep the format very traditional, very simple. Start with stuff I finished in January and then going into whips. And then I think I'll actually skip over acquisitions and instead do like a what I plan to knit in February sort of segment because I'm trying to keep my yarn stash very small, <laughs> very modest and I don't want to be tempted to buy yarn just because I'm talking about yarn. For those of you who are also trying to limit your yarn buying urges, impulses, <laughs> I found that having a rolling wish list works really well. So every time I'm on Instagram, for example, and I see yarn that I want to buy, indie or not, um, as soon as that urge kind of hits me, the urge to buy yarn, I go into my Notion, I have a table where I list the name of the yarn that I want, how much it costs, how many grams, kind of just leave it. I just let it sit. And it feels really good to offload that desire onto a separate document. And I've just found that for me personally, it really has helped me stay on track in terms of not buying more yarn. Okay, on with it, get on with it. First FO, I do feel so fancy when I say these knitting acronyms. <laughs> First finished object is this hat. Um, it's probably better here. Oh yeah, look at the light there. Uh, but don't look at it too closely. <laughs> There's a cable pattern in the front. You can probably see that. Um, however, you can also see that I majorly screwed it up because I think when I was knitting like the second cable here, I shifted my stitches to the left by three and it just caused chaos and destruction. This is the One Day Hat by Yers Lee. First name is Y-E-R-S, last name L-E-E. -E. This is, I believe it's a free pattern on Ravelry. I'm looking down because that's where my phone with my notes are. Yes, free pattern on Ravelry. I knit this in Woolfolk Luft, L-U-F-T, and that is a 55% wool merino yarn, 45% cotton, Pima cotton yarn, and it's a chainette yarn, which I've sort of learned that that's the way that it's spun or constructed. <laughs> I don't know the right words to use. The way that the yarn is made makes for a very kind of airy yarn. <laughs> so even though this is a bulky weight yarn, it didn't feel um, difficult to work with. I personally have found that I'm not a huge fan of bulky weight. I actually don't even like to go for worsted weight. I really like my fine fingering, light fingering lace yarns. But even though this is a bulky weight yarn, it was really nice to work with. So yeah, I intended to make this for my mom. Um, she went and picked out the yarn herself and it is a very stunning red, if I do say so myself. It's like this brownish red color and the it's not variegated, but it's not a solid red or brown or reddish brown, whatever, throughout the whole thing, there's a little bit of variation in it. And I think it's very cool. However, I have learned that when it comes to hats, for some reason, I'm such an impatient knitter. I think that because hats are usually very quick to knit and even with the pattern name, it's called a one day hat, I do want to finish this in a day. So I have that kind of expectation going into starting this project and then by the time I get to the third cable, I think to myself, I should be wrapping up around now, right? I should be um, doing my decreases, right? <laughs> and it's not the case. I was supposed to 
knit a couple more rows in here and I skipped it because I'm impatient. I will try it on for you. <laughs> it's so tiny. It's so small. I should have made it bigger. I should have made it bigger. And I did wet block this and stretch it in the hopes that it would stretch out a little bit more when blocking. But as you can see, it still too small. <laughs> so I just think I look a little bit silly in this. <laughs> um, and I do have a lot of leftover yarn still. So one day when I muster up the courage and the motivation, uh, I will unravel the top and probably just knit one more cable repeat. It's really not that bad. I don't know why. Well, I do know why I got impatient. But, yep, here it is, the one day hat. Um, I like the cable, I just wish I didn't mess it up. So maybe if I do rip it back in the future, I'll rip it all the way back so that I can have a do-over for the cable pattern because right now it just looks a little wonky. <laughs> I love this yarn though. It's so squishy and soft and light. So yeah, it's great. Another piece that I finished this month is right here. This is the Simple Bralette by Naked Knits, or is it Naked Knit? Naked Knit. <laughs> I cast this on during a time when I was very stressed. Uh, my family was moving. <laughs> we spontaneously decided to move, which is not a fun spontaneous decision. Um, and it was a very stressful two weeks. So for the two weeks where my life was really upended and everything I had was in boxes, I just saw this yarn, I had the correct needle size, and I just cast this on. I really didn't intend to make this bralette in this color, but this yarn was just the closest to me when I got the cast on urge. So here we are. Um, this yarn is the Madeleine Tosh Tosh Merino Light. The color is 208 Antique Lace. It's this light brown color. I bought this with the intention to make baby bear bonnet hats for a couple of my coworkers. Um, a lot of my coworkers are having kids right now, so I just thought it would be really cute to make a couple of baby bear bonnets for them. This is a super wash merino yarn, um, and it's 100% merino, nothing else in here. So I just thought that would be a good idea, and instead I used up some of this yarn making myself a bralette. <laughs> so oops on that. This is also my first garment, I guess. I don't know if hats, I think hats are accessories, right? Because I've made hats and socks, but neither of those are, well, you do wear them. But this is the first non-accessory item of clothing that I made for myself. Um, I've been making a lot of stuff for other people, but this I made selfishly for myself, and I do um, love how the sun hits that, <laughs> but I should avoid that spot. <laughs> I learned how to do an I-cord strap which I know um, the I in I chord is short for idiot, but man, did it take me a long time to figure out how to do these straps. And I still don't know if I did them correctly because like the back doesn't look as pretty. Do you know what I mean? Like when you cross over with the yarn, um, is this intentional? I think it is because I, couldn't figure out another way to do eye cords, but I just, when it like flips over like this, I um, I don't really like how that looks. I guess I always thought eye cord would be kind of like an all around um, knit kind of look, but oh well, here we are. Some, you can see I made a mistake here that I don't even know what happened. I probably was just knitting on the wrong side or something. So some of those stitches look a little wonky, um, but I do really like the color of this. Um, and I know that some people feel some type of way about like knitted undergarments, knitted bras, knitted bralettes, things like that, just because it doesn't provide that much coverage, um, obviously doesn't provide that much support, but you can probably tell I don't got too much going on here, so <laughs> I really don't mind it. I think it's very cute. I am thinking about sewing some like old bra padding that, you know, you, if you have bras, like you just have bra padding lying around without a twin. So I have a bunch of those that I just found when I was moving. So I figured, you know, I could maybe sew some cups into here and that would give me, I don't know, some extra coverage there, I guess. I do not have any idea how to sew into a knit fabric, like sew all around without it 
looking weird on the outside. So if you have any links or if you know any techniques that I should look into, please let me know. Um, I haven't attempted to do any sewing yet because one, I'm not a good sewer. That is my sister's specialty. Um, and two, I'm just too scared to mess this up. Like it looks pretty good right now. So if I mess it up, I'm gonna be really sad. And that's really all of the finished objects that I have to share. Like I said, I'm a very slow knitter. I'm looking around like I'm like I could just magically find something else, but there's nothing. I, I know there's nothing. Um, those are the two finished pieces that I have for this month. I do have two works in progress. Two, yeah, two works in progress. First up is Beginnings of a Sock. You might recognize this pattern. This is the Kigi sock by Yuka. Um, I made a pair of these socks for my sister for Christmas and I finished those. Actually, I finished that pair of socks in like the first week of January, but I've sent those off to her um, and I don't really count it as a January finished object because I finished that in like the first three days or something of the month. Um, so now I'm finally casting on a pair for myself. I've made my mom a pair of socks. I made her the cozy, Cozy Autumn Socks, I think. Um, it was a lace sock, which for my first ever knitting project, I chose lace socks. So um, I didn't know lace was hard and it took me a long time to figure it out, but now I would definitely be comfortable with lace patterns, reading lace charts and things like that. Anyways, <laughs> back to this. Uh, yeah, I love the, like, this isn't color work, I don't think, but I love how this looks here, the blue and the white. And after I made my sister a pair, I decided that I really, really wanted a pair for myself. So I'm using the same yarn that I used for her. This blue color is Calborn Woolens Perennial, 60% Superwash Merino, 25% Surrey Alpaca, 15% Nylon. You get 454 meters with 100 grams. This was $28 if you are curious. <laughs> um, I freaking love this. I think this is a light fingering because it's a lot thinner than this yarn, which is the, hold on, <laughs> the Fiberco Amble Wandering Souls. And this is 70% wool, 20% alpaca, 10% nylon, and you get 325 meters for 100 grams. So this is a lot thinner than this. Or not a lot, but it's thinner than this. So I'm thinking this is a light fingering, this is fingering, but I think it should be okay since I'm only using the blue for this color work portion. This is not my main project right now. I do find that I'm a pretty monogamous knitter um, because I just get obsessed <laughs> with the kind of main project that I have going on and I'm a Virgo, so I just like to get things done and monogamous knitting will do that for me. So I really only work on that sock when I'm really tired of raglan increases. And that is your clue for my next work in progress. I keep it in this um, girlfriend collective like clothing bag that was a free gift when I bought something. So I guess it's not a free gift, but it came when I purchased some girlfriend leggings. So that's my project pack. Um, let me figure out how to show this to you. This probably works, right? Here's the collar. Here are the sleeves. Yeah. Um, this is my, oh, what's it called? The Snowfall Sweater Mohair Edition. Um, I'm knitting this on four millimeter needles. And these needles are just like, I just went to Michael's and got these. These were the very first batch of knitting needles that I got. Um, got them at Michael's because I wasn't sure if I was going to be super into knitting, uh, so I didn't want to invest. But yeah, these are my four millimeter needles. And the cable is definitely not long enough for the number of stitches I'm going to have on here, but that's okay. I don't really feel like I need to invest in upgraded needles yet. Um, I mean, it works for what I'm doing, so I'm going to stick with it. I don't know if you could tell when I was holding it up, but the, <clears throat> sorry, the yarn that I'm knitting it with is Shibui Knits Silk Cloud in this beautiful blue color uh, called Deep Water. This is 60% kid mohair, 40% silk. You get 300 meters for 25 grams. Shibui Knits is no longer around. So 
This mohair was on sale for I think 40% off at my local yarn store and I said, yes, please. <laughs> I wanted to get um, so many hanks of this yarn. Um, there was this stunning like light silvery blue that I wanted and then their yellow. Oh, don't even get me started on their yellow. It was so pretty, but I held myself back because I was supposed to be on a yarn ban, but I figured you know, this is like a one-time special exception because they're going, they're closing down and I'm never gonna get my hands on these again. And so I was like, okay, whatever. I'll buy eight of these. <laughs> and I absolutely love the bell sleeve. Yeah, bell sleeve. I almost said bell sleeve sweater, but that doesn't make sense. I love the bell sleeve on the snowfall sweater. Um, that Unlucky Knits has. She has a couple of photos of it. I just, I love bell sleeves and I figured I need a mohair to knit that sweater and I need more colors in my wardrobe. As you can see, I don't have a lot of color. I don't wear a lot of color. Actually, one of my um, knitting goals this year is to make more pieces for myself in colors that are not gray, beige, white, slash cream, or black. So <laughs> that'll be a real challenge because of how slow of a knitter I am. Um, it'll help me be more intentional about bringing color into my wardrobe instead of going out and buying a bunch of different colors that I may or may not wear. In this case, I'm heavily investing in some of these colors like this. This is an investment, okay? Yeah, this was um, $20 per, I think this is a hank per hank and I got eight hanks, and even at 40% off, that's still, you, you can do the math, it's still a pretty penny. Um, so definitely mohair is an investment, so I do wanna be intentional with my color. Anyways, on to the next whip. I have no more whips. <laughs> I don't know what I was gonna pull up, but I had no more whips. However, I did do some swatching, like a good little knitter. <laughs> I'm still learning about gauge and needle size and how to adapt different yarns to patterns and what it means if you're a couple stitches off or you know things like that. I'm still learning, still figuring it out. But um, I have two swatches here. This is the same yarn combo and it's in, I think you can tell, but it's in a very pale yellow and please excuse the janky way that I have connected my post-it notes to my swatches. <laughs> Those swatches were this combo. This is Knitting for Olive Soft Silk Mohair in Elderflower. Um, I bought this directly off of their website, so it was pretty cheap, but shipping was $15, 15 US dollars flat. So I made sure to buy a good amount of yarn while I was there. And then this <laughs> is Typical Bliss hand dyed yarn um, in the colorway Golden Ticket. This is her fingering wool, 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. You get 373 meters for 100 grams. I really wanted a pale yellow cardigan. And so with this combo, I thought it'd be really nice. And I do really like how these swatches look. Um, I think this would be such a nice spring cardigan. <laughs> so, um, okay, April cardigan is something I would like to cast on in February. And then I also have this, again, from Shibui Knits when I realized that they were going out of business or closing down. This is Billow, and this is 41% cotton, 35% baby alpaca, and 24% merino in the color Bone. Um, and this is a DK weight yarn. For 50 grams, you get 229 meters, and this was $19. I don't remember exactly how many I bought, but enough to make a sweater. <laughs> um, and I did swatch this as well. Sorry, now I feel like the sun is kind of annoying. Oh yeah, I should have been holding them up to the camera this whole time. I'm so sorry. I will learn and be better moving forward. This is my swatch. Um, I mean, it's just basic stock in it, and it's only a half swatch because I don't know about you, but I don't have time to do a full swatch. It takes a lot of yarn. I get really worried that I'll run out of yarn if I do a full swatch. I don't think that's, um, that big of a risk, but I just get really concerned. So, 
yeah i really want to make the lola pullover by ewe knits i talked about this in my spring planning video but i did do a swatch and here it is and i like how this yarn feels it's so sticky by the way if i ever had to frog this yarn i think i think i would cry even winding it i uh hand wound a ball of this and i needed to enlist people in my family to help me because it was so sticky and such a pain to hand wind so yeah if i ever had to frog this i would not be happy and i really hope that i get it right <laughs> my first try but but we will definitely see okay that is it for this month's knitting wrap up <laughs> i hope that was enjoyable to watch and if you have any tips for any of the things that i'm working on please let me know i'm still so so new to knitting um, but i'm learning so much and i'm having so much fun learning so i would love to absorb some knowledge from you if you'd like to impart me some wisdom be on the lookout for a yarn stash video i think that video will be super quick because i have a very what i consider modest size box that holds all my yarn right now and i would like to talk through them so that when i look back months later i can see what i was working with um so be on the lookout for that and i will see you next time bye <laughs>